What's up, you bum sniffers? This is Delvage, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you a solid video on Adobe Premiere Pro. Over the time that I've been using the software, there are a couple key tricks and tips that I've been picking up. Normally you say tips and tricks, you don't say tricks and tips, but whatever, we're just gonna roll with it. There are a couple things that you can do to really speed up your workflow when editing a project. Now these things are going to be really small in an individual scenario, but once you add them up over a longer edit, say, two, four, six, 10, 12 hours. They're really going to speed up the time it takes for you to edit a full project. They're going to be invaluable for you to have long-term. They're gonna save you hours over the course of your time editing in Premiere. And I think everybody just likes to work a little bit faster because that way you have more time for your personal life, your free time, other hobbies that you may have, or sleep like me because you know I sleep like what, 10 hours a day at this point. It's just kind of ridiculous, but living that quarantine life, am I right? So if we hop on over to Premiere, Normally what happens when you try and label something in your project bin or your timeline, it doesn't sync with each other. And that becomes really frustrating when you're trying to organize your files like I do. I like having very specific colors for different types of footage. So for example here, if we wanted to choose on our timeline the cookie pans versus the steak pans, we wanted to separate those two. So sugar cookies and chocolate chip cookies here. We'll select those two holding control. Normally what happens is if we hit shift and we try and label these to a specific color like say Caribbean, it's not going to sync on the timeline. However, if we go over to file, project settings and then general, we can click this little box that says display the project item name and label color for all instances. And what this is going to allow us to do is sync the colors across the project media bin as well as the timeline. It's gonna save a bunch of time trying to relabel everything properly on your timeline. So go ahead and click the little box and then click OK. And as you can see on the timeline, it automatically syncs. Depending on how large your project is, it may take a little bit of time for Premiere to catch up with what you're doing. We can do the exact same thing in the video bin here. So all we have to do is shift click all of these settings here or all of the project media click label, and then go to say rows, and it'll automatically sync on the timeline, a very useful trick to have up your sleeve when you want to organize all your files by color, like I do, especially for larger projects. Okay, so the second tip to become a beast at Premiere has something to do with the timeline. The timeline is where all of your time really is going to be. It's not in the color correction, it's not in you know anything else really, it's the timeline. Normally what happens when you actually try and play your footage back is the timeline doesn't sync up to when you're actually scrolling on your timeline or trying to play footage. And personally, I dislike that very much. I'd much rather have the timeline follow the cursor for when I'm trying to edit. It's going to make it a lot easier to make those cuts, to make those extra little markers that you really need when you're trying to make a quick edit or even when you're trying to expand something out and edit something from a larger scale. So the way to fix it and to get the cursor to follow you on your timeline when you're trying to make those edits is you go over to edit preferences and then go to timeline and it'll bring up this window up here and you want to make sure that you change page scroll to smooth scroll so now if we zoom in here what's going to happen is if we take the cursor back and press play or spacebar, the timeline is going to follow our cursor in direct path. And that's gonna make the editing process again so much smoother. The timeline is where you spend most of the time editing. It's not in the color correction, it's not in the effects, unless you're some crazy wizard that makes custom effects like that. That's a different story, but for general editing purposes, most of your time and consumption resources is going to be on the timeline. So having this little edit and fix in your preferences is going to allow you to make those minute a little detailed cuts and edits much quicker. Now the last tip is something that's going to allow you to stop overlaying other footage on top of other footage and then also avoiding that little scenario that you sometimes get when you have one or two frames of black screen that you just don't notice until you watch the final render. I know this has happened to you if you video edit a lot. What happens is you try and drag footage directly from the timeline up against the footage from your previous little edit or segment, you maybe have this cursor 
you know, one or two frames ahead and you can't see it in the big picture because you're scrolled out and maybe you make a mistake once or twice. And it doesn't happen every video, but when it does and you have to re-render, it really gets to you. So there is an actual real easy fix to this. All you have to do is if you have separated clips on the timeline, you can right click and click ripple delete. And this is going to perfectly match your two clips together and delete the space in between. But that's something a lot of people already know. What people don't do is they don't bind a keyboard shortcut directly for ripple delete. So if we go over to edit and then our keyboard shortcuts here, I personally have my ripple delete if I type it in. My ripple delete is actually bound to F and I recommend that you guys do this too. I don't have a specific use for F in Premiere so if you want to use the same key as I do just type it in in the shortcut window and what this will allow us to do is say we want to make a quick cut on the cookie timeline here. My Siri just went off. Hey Siri, look at this. My Siri literally just went, okay, you know what, I'm done, I'm done with you Siri. So say we want to make a quick edit on this cookie clip here and we want to ripple delete the in-between areas, we don't want to have to drag it out. So using the razor tool, I'm going to click here and then I'm going to scroll my little cursor over and click here. And normally what happens for ripple delete is you just press delete on your keyboard and then right click and ripple delete. But the way I have it set up when you have a keyboard shortcut bound to ripple delete, all you have to do is click the clip and then just press that keyboard shortcut which on my case it's F and it'll instantly delete that clip. It really makes that editing process much more streamlined. So I hope you guys enjoyed those tips. They've helped me a ton in the past and I'm sure they're going to save me a ton of time in the future when I'm trying to edit even smaller five, 10 minute projects. It's the little things guys. It's not the things that take a ton of time to really get your head around. It's the little things that are gonna speed up your workflow tremendously. Make sure you hit the like button down below. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment if you have any questions about what I just went over, I'm happy to assist you. Subscribe and hit the bell for notifications because as we all know, YouTube's subscription service just does not work properly anymore like it used to. So good luck out there with your video editing. My name's Delvidge and until next time guys, I'm out. Peace.